Hello everybody, Mr. Slope Guy here to help you guys with domain, range, and functions. And let's start with coordinate notation. A relation is a set of ordered pair. It's like having an x value and a y value. And you want to write down the domain is the set of all the first coordinates or x coordinates. The domain is the set of all first coordinates or x coordinates. And also write down the range is the set of all second coordinates or y coordinates. So the domain are all our x values and the range are the y values. So if we're given a t table and we're asked to express an ordered pair, an ordered pair from a t table is really basic, it's almost so easy, it doesn't feel like you're doing any work. So negative two, negative four is the first point from our t-table. To express that as an ordered pair, I just want to use parentheses and a comma between them, negative two, negative four. Negative one, negative one from the t-table to an ordered pair, negative one, comma, negative one in parentheses, and two, four would be two, comma, four in parentheses. So expressing order pair from a t-table, super easy to do. So let's say we're given these points, negative 2, negative 4, negative 1, negative 1, and 2, 4, and we're asked to state the domain. Well, wow, how would we get the domain from these points? Well, the domain are the x values. We're looking for those first points or the x's. So if we look at each of these points, we're talking about negative 2, x from the first point, negative 1, and 2. Now, most of the time, your answers will be written smallest to largest, but it's not particularly wrong if it's in another order. It's just customary to write them smallest to largest like that. How about if we're asked to state the range? Well, the range are all the y values or the second values. So we're looking at negative 4, negative 1, and 4. Domain are the x values, and the range are the y values. And we can look at those ordered pair on a coordinate plane. If we graph those ordered pair, we're looking at the ordered pair 2, 0, 1, 3, and 0, 6. Those are the ordered pairs graphed. So domain, we're talking about the, the x values are the first number, and range, we're talking about the second value or y value. If you do have a value repeat, it's not wrong if you write the, answer, the number there twice, but customarily we would write it one time if you're listing domain or listing the range. Functions, 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 functions. Let's look at our definition of what is a function. And this is definitely worth writing down, this part in orange I would write in your notes. A function is a relation in which no two ordered pairs have the same x value. So the x's do not repeat. A function is a relation in which no two ordered pairs have the same x value. So what would a problem look like in this case? So you'd be given something like 1, 2, 1, negative 2, 2, 5, and 3, 4. And the great thing about functions, it's generally just does this meet the definition or does it not meet the definition of a function? And when I'm looking at these, I'm looking at the x values. I'm looking at 1, 1, 2, 3. And I'm looking to see, do we have any numbers repeating? And in this case, I have a 1 repeating. So this is a non-example. This is not a function because each x is not unique. Each x would have to be unique. In this case, we have a repeating 1, therefore not a function. Let's say we're given ordered pair 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 5, 4, 6. If I go through and look at these x values, I have 1, 2, 3, 4. And notice how no numbers are repeating. If each x is only used once, then it meets our definition of a function. Also remember, 1 and negative 1 are two different numbers. You can have a 1 and a negative 1 in an x and it not be repeating. So you're talking about each number being unique for the domain, for the x value. Now, everybody, I hope, remembers the vertical lines. Vertical lines are the ones that go straight up and down. And in order to tell if we have a function or not from a graph, instead of listing all the points that come from a graph, um, we have what's called the vertical line test. And the vertical line test will tell us, do we have a function without listing every single point that makes 
a graph, we can use what's called the vertical line test. So a vertical line test, and you'll want to write down these couple sentences to define a vertical line test. And a vertical line test, to visually tell if a line is a function or not, you can draw vertical lines through a figure. If the vertical line passes through the figure more than one time, it is not a function. To visually tell if a line is a function or not, you can draw vertical lines through a figure. If the vertical line passes through the figure more than one time, it's not a function. So pause the video, write that down, and then we'll pick that up with some examples. All right, welcome back here. Let's look at some graphing examples. So let's say we have the graph of this parabola in blue, and we do the vertical line test, which is I can roll my pencil across, or I can draw some straight up and down lines. And each time I draw a line, this one, it's passing at that little green dot is where it goes through the blue parabola. And no matter where I draw a vertical line on this figure, it only goes through once. That means it's a function. So let's look at a few of these examples. See if you can pick up the pattern on these. So if we look at this graph and I draw vertical lines through the circle, there are places where I draw and the vertical line passes through the figure more than one time. That means it fails the vertical line test, which if we listed all the ordered pair, we'd have an X repeating there. We'd have an X repeating at negative two. Negative two is being used twice. That, that's what makes the picture fail the vertical line test is that it's obvious you have an X repeating if we could draw a vertical line through the object and it crosses more than one time, then it's not a function. So great thing about these, not a ton of steps to do on these. We can look at some pictures. So we have a couple more figures. Figure on the left, if I draw vertical lines straight up and down, no matter where I draw the line, it only crosses once. So is that a function or not a function? Well, if it only crosses through once, that means I don't have any X's repeating, that would be a function. Now, if there's any place I could draw through a line and it crosses twice, then it is not a function. So this one fails the vertical line test, not a function. Try the vertical line test on this. Well, there are places everywhere I draw it, it only crosses through once, no matter where I draw it, vertical lines, so that is a function. How about this graph? No, not a function. How about this one? Graph looks like an absolute value graph. And everywhere I draw a vertical line only goes through once. That means each of the X's are only used one time. That passes the vertical line test. So that is a function. So vertical line test, you can roll your pencil across. You can draw this straight up and down lines real fast through the object and see and make sure that it's only passing one time, then you know it's a function. If it fails at any point, two points through it, not a function. What if we're just given a table and we're determined if each of these tables would be a function? If we look at the one on the left at table A, if we look down the X values, we have two, one, zero, negative one, four. I don't see any numbers repeating, not a function. I'm sorry, is a function because each of the X's are only used one time. B, negative 4, negative 1, 0, 2, 3. If I look over the Y's, I see a whole bunch of negative 4s. Negative 4, negative 4, negative 4, negative 4 on the Y. Do I have to look at the Y values to tell if I have a function? No, I only need to look at the X values. And each of those X's is unique. I have a negative 4, negative 1, 0, 2, and 3. So A and B, both of these tables are functions because the X's are each only used one time. They're not paired with multiple Y's. Now we have what's called mapping, and you'll run into mapping sometimes. And mapping is a little bit different to determine if you have a function. A couple rules, we need to make sure all the X's are used, and each of the X values can only be assigned to one Y. And they use little circles with the groups. So let's look at what those would look like. Let's say we have these two circles, and they'll have lines drawn matching numbers. They'll have one with six, two, two, three, four, 4, 8, 5, 10, and they'll say, is this a function? Well, are all the X's used? Yes, all the X's are used. Do any of the X's repeat? No, each domain is used one time with the range, so this would make a function. And if I listed the points that it made, 
1, 6, 2, 2, 3, 4, 4, 8, 5, 10. I have x's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. No numbers repeat there. So that makes it a function. How about if I have mapping with 1, 4, 4, 4, 2, 4, 5, 4, 3, 4. Are all the x's used? Yes. Are any of them used more than once? No. So that is a function. All the x's are assigned. And no x has more than one y assigned to it. So that makes it a function. What if I have 1, 2, 2, 10, 3, 8, 4, 6, 5, 4, and 2, 4? Well, all the x's are assigned, but there is a problem there. 2 is being used twice, and if I listed those ordered pair, I see that I have 2 with 4, and I have 2 with 10. So that means I have an x value that repeats. I have the ordered pair 2, 4. I have the ordered pair 2, 10. I have 2 being used twice, not a function. That is bad. Can't do that with mapping. Not a function. What if I have a mapping problem with 1, 6, 4, 4, 2, 2, 5, 10? Is that a function? Well, none of the x's repeat, but we do have this new problem. They didn't use 3. So if 3 is not used, you have a number left out. You didn't use 3, then it's not a function. That is the only additional thing with mapping is that all of the domain, all of the x values need to be used. All right, hope that helps you guys with domain, range, and function. Mr. Slope Guy telling you to have a great day. O-U-T spells out.